foundation may be broadly classified under two heads shallow foundation and deep foundation a spread footing or simply footing is a type of shallow foundation used to transmit the load of an isolated column on the subside which is called as isolated footing hello everyone welcome to visual civil in this video we will learn the design of axially loaded isolated pad footing as per IS 456-2000 code provisions. Watch this video till the end to understand the design concepts in simplified manner. Let us design an isolated pad footing for the column of size 300 mm by 500 mm, which transfers the axial service load of 1500 kN. The safe bearing capacity of the soil at site is 185 kN per meter square. The grade of concrete is M20 and the grade of steel is Fe415. The value of FCK for M20 grade of concrete is 20 Newton per mm square and the value of Fy for Fe415 steel is 415 Newton per mm square. The footing will be designed for the total service load which includes self weight of the footing. Hence, assume the self weight of the footing equal to 10% of axial service load transferred from the column. Hence, total service load is equal to 1650 kN. Let us compute the minimum required area of a footing by dividing the total service load with safe bearing capacity of soil. After solving, we get it equal to 8.92 meter square. The length and width of the footing can be proportioned based on footing area required. Let x is the overhang of the footing from the face of column. Consider equal overhang in all four directions as shown in figure. Hence, length of footing equal to 500 plus 2 times x, while width equal to 300 plus 2 times x. Compute the overhang x by equating area of a footing with the area of a footing required. Here we get the value of x equal to 1292 mm. Round up this value on larger side equal to 1400 mm. Get the length and width of the footing by substituting value of x. We get length equal to 3.3 meter and width equal to 3.10 meter. Therefore, the area of a footing provided is equal to 10.23 meter square, which is more than required area. In next step, calculate the net upward soil pressure by dividing the load from column with area of a footing provided. After solving, we get the net upward soil pressure equal to 146.62 kN per meter square. This should be less than SBC of soil. Next, compute the factored net upward pressure QU by multiplying the net upward pressure with load factor. Consider the load factor equal to 1.5. After solving, we get the factored soil pressure equal to 0.21993 Newton per mm square. In next step, compute the bending moment acting on the footing due to upward soil pressure. As per IS code, the maximum moment should be computed at the face of the column for the footing supporting a concrete column. So, let us consider the critical section YY for the bending moment about short face that is width of the column and the section xx for the bending moment about longer face that is depth of the column. Therefore, it is required to calculate the bending moment about yy section that is muyy and the bending moment about xx section that is muxx. Let us compute the bending moment about short face of the column. Compute the moment due to factored net upward pressure acting over the entire area of the footing on one side of the YY section plane as shown in the figure. 
Hence, MUYY is equal to half into QU into L square, where L is 1.4 meter. After solving, we get MUYY equal to 668.14 kN meter. Next, compute the bending moment about long face of the column. Compute the moment due to factored net upward soil pressure acting over the entire area of the footing on one side of the XX section plane as shown in the figure. Computation of MUXX is similar to MUYY, which is earlier discussed. After solving, we get the value of MUXX equal to 711.25 kN meter. Depth of footing will be decided based on bending moment, one way shear and two way shear criteria. Let us calculate the depth based on bending moment. The depth will be computed by using the equation given in clause G1.1 of IS code. There are two values of bending moment about short and long column phase. Select the maximum value MUXX equal to 711.25 kN meter to calculate the depth. Select XO max by D equal to 0.48 for FE415 steel as per the clause 38.1. As the maximum bending moment is about XX section, the value of a small b should be equal to dimension of the footing parallel to XX section, which is equal to 3.3 meter. After putting all the values in the equation, we get the depth of footing equal to 279 mm. Next, let us compute the depth of footing based on one-way shear consideration. As per IS code, the critical section for the one-way shear is at a distance of effective depth of footing from the face of column. Let section YY and section XX are the critical section along short and long face of the column respectively. Hence, compute the shear force about YY and XX section. Compute the shear force due to factored net upward soil pressure acting over the entire area of the footing on one side of the YY section as shown in the figure. Hence, VUYY is equal to QU into L, where L is 1400 minus D mm. Here, effective depth D is unknown. As the QU is pressure, it should be multiplied by the width of the section. After putting all the values and solving, we get VUYY in terms of effective depth D. Next, compute the shear force due to factored net upward soil pressure acting over the entire area of the footing on one side of the XX section plane as shown in the figure. Computation of a VUXX is similar to VUYY, which is earlier discussed. Next, compute the shear strength tau C. As the reinforcement area is unknown at this stage, assume nominal percentage of the steel equal to 0.15% of the gross cross-sectional area of the footing. Referring table 19, of IS code for M20 grade of concrete and 0.15% steel, the value of tau C is equal to 0.28 Newton per mm square. To be safe in shear, the shear strength tau C should be equal or more than shear stress tau V. Hence, to get the unknown effective depth D, equate the shear strength to shear stress. Here, use the maximum value of shear force. After putting all the values and solving, we get the effective depth of footing equal to 616 mm, which is more than depth from the bending moment criteria. Hence, the depth equal to 616 mm should be used in the remaining calculations. Let us check the adequacy of this effective depth for two-way or punching shear criteria. As per IS code, the critical section for two-way shear is at distance D by 2 
from the periphery of the column. Hence, the two-way shear action is along A, B, C, D as shown in the figure. The shear force due to factored net upward pressure is acting over the entire outside area of the footing other than the area of a critical section A, B, C, D as shown in the figure by hatching. This will be computed by multiplying the net factored upward soil pressure with hatched area. The hatch area can be calculated by deducting the area of a critical section ABCD from footing plan area. By putting the factored soil pressure in Newton per mm square and hatched area in mm square, we get shear force equal to 2249.66 into 10 to the power 3 Newton. Compute the shear stress tau V by dividing the shear force with the cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area is the multiplication of perimeter of a critical section ABCD with effective depth. The perimeter of critical section is 4064 mm while depth is 616 mm. After solving, we get the two-way shear stress equal to 0.89 Newton per mm square. As per clause 31.6.3, the calculated two-way shear stress at the critical section shall not exceed Ks into tau c. The Ks equal to 0.5 plus beta c, where beta c is a ratio of short side to long side of the column we get the Ks equal to 1.1, but Ks should be less than or equal to 1. Hence, consider Ks equal to 1. Next, tau c is equal to 0 0.25 into under root of Fck, which we get 1.118 Newton per mm square. Therefore, allowable two-way shear strength Ks into tau c equal to 1.118 Newton per mm square. This is more than shear stress tau v. Hence, we can say that the effect to depth is adequate for two-way shear also. Now, finalize the depth of footing. Assume clear cover to reinforcement bar equal to 50 mm and bar diameter equal to 12 mm. Hence, the effective cover to long lower tire bar is calculated as 56 mm while the effective cover to short upper tire bar is 68 mm. Assume total depth equal to 700 mm at column face and keep the same depth at the end as it is a pad footing. So effective depth for long lower tire bar is 644 mm and for short upper tire bar is 632 mm. After getting the depth of footing, let us compute reinforcement in this step. The area of a steel required for the design bending moment can be calculated by referring the formula given in clause G 1.1 B and exer G. This formula results in quadratic equation. So, you need to solve the quadratic equation to get the value of AST. Otherwise, you can also use the simplified equation number 2 to calculate area of a steel. Choose the equation number 2 for reinforcement calculation. In previous steps, the bending moment about short face of the column MUYY and long face of the column MUXX were computed. Hence, it is required to compute the steel for MUYY and MUXX. Let us compute the required steel for MUYY. In the equation, value of B is equal to footing dimension parallel to section YY, while effective depth D equal to 644 mm for long lower tire bars. After putting all the values, we get the area of a steel equal to 2966 mm square. As per IS code, the minimum reinforcement and spacing of the bar requirement are same as the slab. Hence, the minimum reinforcement for FE415 bar is 0.122% of gross 
cross sectional area of the footing. Here, the percentage of the steel PT is equal to 0.136%, which is more than 0.12% for FE415 bars in footing. Next, compute the required steel for EMUXX. In the equation, value B is equal to footing dimension parallel to section XX, while effective depth D equals to 632 mm for short upper tire bars. After putting all the values, we get the area of a steel equal to 3221 mm square. Here, the percentage of the steel BT is equal to 0.139%, which is more than minimum percentage of the FE415 bars in footing. Let us fix the diameter and number of bars to be provided along the length, that is long lower tire bar. Select the 12 mm dia bar. The cross sectional area of this bar is 113 mm square. Therefore, number of bars equal to 27. Considering the end cover on both sides of the bar as 50 mm, the spacing of the bar is 115 mm. Next, fix the diameter and number of bars to be provided along the width of footing, that is short upper tire bars. Select 12 mm dia bar, so the number of bars is equal to 29 and the spacing of the bar is 140 mm. Finally, let us summarize the design and the reinforcement detailing. An axially loaded isolated pad footing is designed with M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. The width of footing is 3100 mm, length is 3300 mm and depth is 700 mm. 27 number of 12 mm dia bars are provided in long lower tire and 29 number of 12 mm dia bars are provided in short upper tire. If you like this video, then share your thoughts in comment section. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of such interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.